Hello and welcome everybody to episode 4 of Cold and Fluffy. It is once again midnight here on the west coast because I am incapable of starting my recording any earlier than that. Um, we will be of course going through last week's games and then looking at what we have in store tomorrow and making some predictions. I have not yet put in anyone else's predictions. I believe Brent is the only one that's put out content so far. But I will do that before the games. So maybe I'll post a little screenshot. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but let's just hop into things. Uh, Yumi versus Yop. Oh, well, I guess before we hop into the game itself, we could take a quick look at the predictions. I've uh, added a little overall accuracy or average accuracy. Either one, the same thing. Um, just because I noticed it looked like there was a lot less correct predictions this week than last week. And indeed there is. Um, by quite a large drop, too. Uh, I think more than anything, it's just that there was a lot of 1-1s this week. And even though three weeks into the season, Swiss does its job, you'd expect there to be a lot of 1-1s, I think most content creators, myself well included, would much rather give 2-0 scores. They're a lot more interesting. They're a bit more of an opinion. Um, and so no one gave more 1-1s than 2-0s. Multiple people gave only 2-0s. And with all the 1-1s one that happened, that just caused a lot of incorrect predictions. So, just thought that was an interesting little thing to look at. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into the games. Yumi versus Yop. This was a game that I believe... What's this? Go away. Yeah, I can't click on it. There you go. I believe I predicted a 2-0 for Yop. Yes, I did. I thought that Yop just had a lot more balanced of a team. I thought Bible Man would cause a lot of trouble for one of Yumi or Scroomlight, kind of putting the game on the back of the other one. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it, I guess. Yop has a tri-core, Yumi has a duo core. I think in the current age of Dota, uh, balanced teams tend to do better. Um... And game one, that's certainly what happened. 43-7, to absolutely insane stomp here. Uh, let's take a look at the drafts. We see a Oracle first overall, the Biggie Special, followed up by a Spirit Breaker. Then we see the U uh, <laughs> Yumi, the Eno Juggernaut on 7, and the Terrorblade, the Yumi Terrorblade, the classic, coming out on 8. Um, for bands... A lot of uh, cheesy shit. It's a little weird they're banning Yumi-specific heroes. I don't think that Scroomlight plays TB, Arc Warden, or Morph. I could be wrong. Um, I at least look at his top five, I guess. So it's weird that they aren't banning more Scroomlight heroes, but I don't think they could have guessed a Pugna anyway. Yumi is obviously going to ban a lot of TB counters. Looks like they specifically went for lane counters. Three very difficult heroes to lane into for TB there. Then we see a Witch Doctor pickup for Spaz and a Jakiro for Blackout. Once again, going for this double five thing with the offlane Oracle. Uh, not something I'm crazy about, but something that seems to be working out for them. Um, we get an Axe pickup for Lads. I guess meant to counter Juggernaut. Although I think Jakiro plus Jug is probably a nasty lane. I don't think I'd want to play into that as an Axe personally. And then the Bible Man, Timbersaw, good against TB, good against these strength heroes. Only problem really is the Witch Doctor. A uh, bunch of mid bands, Electric, and a Pugna. The Pugna, I think, is mostly to deal with Timbersaw. It doesn't do much to Lesh, I think. Does it? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Pugna Ward no longer works on orbs. I don't know if it works on toggles or not, though. I think maybe it does still work on toggles. Uh, not that he actually took it till quite late. <clears throat> um, does it say? Doesn't really say anything. Doesn't even mention the orb thing anymore, it looks like. Alright, whatever. I'm not, I don't think I ever mentioned orbs, it's just like a change you have to know about. Unless it's uh, maybe in game there's more text, unlikely. Uh, but anyway, they pick Pugna. Um... It's, pr I don't know, like, on, on paper, I think it's okay. I don't think it really saves the draft, is, I guess, my immediate thought here. Um, the TB is very heavily countered. 
Jakiro, Timber, Lushrak, all very strong against it. Uh, I think Jug is meh against it. Um, I, I don't think he's like... I think he's probably 50-50. Uh, you can't swap him while he's ulting, of course. Um, and he tends to buy some form of AoE, be it Battle Fury or Mjolnir. But, especially with the Battle Fury build, I think TB's pretty tanky against him. I don't know, it doesn't look like it mattered. Everything fell out of control. Uh, 10 minutes, they have a 4k, almost 5k disadvantage. Oh, yes, there's a bit of farm that goes on here with this little dip. They're just dying constantly. There's only actually one death on Radiant before 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, Yumi TB equals countered. I think most teams are still better off just banning the TB. Especially if you're not going to pick counters, like, preemptive counters. But for a team like Yop's team that's uh, very much on par in terms of skill, uh, if not even just better in terms of like the way their skill is distributed, it's it's cool. TB's not that great of a hero. This seems like it worked well. There's the Eno Jug, of course, a classic. Um, bit of an interesting skill, uh, item build from him with the Yasha Basher Ags. I don't think that's bad, but it seems a little unusual for sure. And yeah, yeah, everything else seems pretty normal. Uh, I should, I should stop talking so much about stomps. They're not very interesting. Make sure I have time for the real games. Okay, game two. We'll talk about the draft, and that's pretty much it. I don't really know what was going through Yelp's head on this one. We see the seventh pick jug again. Uh, five ogre, six shaman, seven jug, eight axe. Uh, I believe Yop did the eight axe and do a seven jug last week, and it worked quite well. This week, not quite as well. Um, I don't know how much of that's the Axe's fault. We see a Bane pickup. Uh, a counter to the Jug. Once again, it's like Shaman's your four. I guess that's fine. This is like the exact same drafts as last week, it seems. That's how it looks to me, at least. I think it may be literally the same, right? Oracle game one, Shaman game two for Biggie. That's fine. I think this is a lot of single target, though. That's like my one complaint here. And it's especially bad against Yumi, who is known for playing, like, multi-unit cheese heroes. And we'll see that soon enough, because we get a Slark, then a DP. Um, the DP's a little weird to me. I guess your traditional strength offlaners do struggle with Slark. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. How I feel about the DP pick. That is a hero that you do need to snowball a little bit on to be useful. It's not hard to have an easy lane with that hero. But I don't know if I'd be pumped to give a player like Lads a DP into a player like Yop. That seems maybe a little bit brave to me. Um, we can look at the lanes in a bit, maybe. I don't know how much I care. We see a Viper ban, we see a Lushrak ban. And then we see an OD ban and a Void Spirit ban. I don't entirely understand why, with all this single target nonsense, they have not banned any of Yumi's cheese heroes, because Yumi then picks the Meepo. And to make it even worse, they like pick th they pick this hero that is nothing against Meepo. Apparently, Eno is asking for a real counter, and Yop didn't want to give it. I don't know. I don't know if this is like overconfidence or what. 1-1 one, one agreement, Munka. But this is just a super free Meepo game. Uh, like, the hero's not very good right now. I think there's a lot of counters that work very effectively against it. But they just don't have anything. They have two single target supports. They have an Axe, who's, I think, pretty mediocre against Meepo. Because Meepo tends to just heal through the counter helix. I, I don't think... You can really do the normal like 100 to 0 thing you do with Axe against Meepo. And then they last pick a Sniper, which is just fucking weird. I don't know what was going through their head when they picked that hero. And like, not surprisingly, Yumi just wins this game. I got no, there's nothing to say. It's just a really bad draft for Meop. Not even like necessarily uh, like in an objective way is it bad. Because I think other than the fact that there's like maybe a little too much single target... I think the first four picks are okay. Like, I really can't complain about those. But then we get this leaving in the Meepo, despite lacking AoE 
damage and AoE control. And then last picking a sniper. It, like, it just goes so completely out of control in these last couple picks that it just immediately turns into a draft loss. So that's kind of whack. Um, I will remember to look at the tier list this week. Um, I have these teams both in S tier. I'm not going to move them. They won one to each other. I think Yop's team did look a little stronger than Yumi's, but I'm not going to move Yumi down. That's just that. Cryptic versus Maniac. I predicted a 1-1, ended up with a Cryptic 2-0. I, I was really considering giving Cryptic the 2-0 prediction, and I kind of pussied out because I had some hope for Maniac's team. Um, that was a maybe misplaced. We'll take a look at the game, see how close they are. I, I haven't really looked that much ahead this week. So here we go, 19 to 39, pretty one-sided graph. Not looking too great here. I'm seeing a techies already. So we see the Earth Spirit and the Lion Ban, the favorite heroes of the Dude and Yolk Soup. We see a Shaman pickup and we see a Skyrath pickup. Definitely a very strange combo. Um, this is like. Just, I don't know, Shaman plus the Maniac Comfort Hero. It does look a bit weird, but like 90% of that's just Skyrath being a weird hero to pick. I understand why he does it, because he's Maniac, but... And on the other side, we have Lich Techies. Arguably, also kind of weird, because it has a Techies, and Techies is a weird hero, but I think most people know Yolk is a Techies player. This is something that can and will happen. Um, the hero is like surprisingly effective in the right hands. Uh, I, I see Scrub own with this hero a lot. It's kind of hit or miss, but it, it can do a lot if you uh, can play it well. Like a lot of the things that a 4 might normally do, be it tower push, lockdown, damage. Techies can do all of them. Uh, you just have to be kind of preemptive in a way and position well. In order to get the stasis traps off. In order to get your suicide off. But anyway. Techies picked. It's all downhill from here I'm sure. Uh, not entirely sure. What the bands are about. On Nowhere Earth Spirit. I assume these are just research bands. I'm not going to question it too much. See Viper T DP Tide. Which seem. A mix of mid and off lane. I think Viper is cryptic focused. DP might be Cryptic as well, but it could also just be a mix of Cryptic and Offlane. I'm seeing a lot of Offlane DP nowadays. And then a Tide Hunter, uh, which is definitely an Offlane ban, I think, unless Cryptic's been practicing mid Tide Hunter. I'd believe it. We see a Legion pick up, followed by a Puck, which is really strange to me. Puck is a very good hero, but to pick it directly into Tide, and even Techies, honestly, seems a little weird. You're, if you duel, you, if you get dueled, you die. Um, and the stasis traps are very annoying as well. Uh, you can potentially, you can like phase shift through part of them, but I think they last too long. Like you can't just sit at a world for the whole time. You eventually have to come back and just be sitting there in the root, which is very annoying. Uh, we see the Wraith King pick up for a loose moose, followed by a Sand King. The Sand King pick seems fine to me. Um, yeah, no complaints there. It's a lot of magic damage, I guess. That's like the one problem. It's a lot of magic damage into two cores that tend to buy pretty early BKBs. Uh, Legion usually just always goes Blink Blade Mail. BKB, and it looks like that's exactly what Legion did this game. And Wraith King can go a pretty early BKB if they want. Um, so that's maybe like a bit of a downside, but that's maybe more on the previous picks than anything. I don't know if there's really any offlaners that do large amounts of physical damage. Or even BKB piercing stuns. Really, like, the beast is banned. Um, uh, what else is there? DP's banned for that matter. I guess I'm blanking a little. I know there's probably some more. Enigma maybe is kind of one that just doesn't care BKBs. Uh, but that kind of requires someone that knows how to play Enigma, and I don't think... Oh, it is... It's, I remember, it's uh, Nomad. Nomad uh, carry and Oz Offlane. I'd almost forgotten. I mean, I don't didn't really remember. I looked at the players, and then it's like, oh yeah, Maniac said they swapped. Um, so yeah, I don't think Oz plays Enigma. 
So anyway, moving on. We see a troll ban, we see a PL ban. Both fairly reasonable. Troll, very good in the LC. I think pretty good into the Wraith King. Um, and Techie's just kind of annoying when you lack AoE. Uh, we see a Jug pick up. Once again, Jug, a hero that most teams are picking like first. Puck, a hero that you can pick very early. Uh, I feel like, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad pick here, but I you have to wonder, like... If you just pick it earlier, could you have a better, like, support pick? Or no? Is it, is, are the hero pools too small? Is there, like, I think this team might just have a hero pool problem. I'm not sure. Uh, whatever. Moving on. Uh, Night Stalker picked up at the end. Pretty good into most of the heroes. It's kind of a weird pick. It's a weird mid pick. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily the best pick in the game, but it's probably the best pick for Cryptic. Since his hero pool isn't going to be very normal. Um, we see three BKBs before the 30 minute mark. Not surprising. All these heroes are more than happy to do that. It looks like the dude has a pretty good game here. Wraithing struggling a bit with that 20 minute radiance. But gets online eventually. Jug. Okay game? I don't think these timings are great. But they, I don't think they're bad either. Right? I'm not great with timings, I'll be honest. Yolk looked like she had a pretty good game. 19 minute ags. I r definitely don't know Techie's timings, but there's a lot of kills here and there's a lot of damage, so I'm assuming it went well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Reedy didn't have a very good game. I think his team is super make or break on Reedy. I don't think it's a very good puck game. It's not a good puck game at all. You don't really bother Wraith King that much. He just comes back to life. Legion kills you. Night Stalker kills you. Techies kills you. Like, what? what is your goal this game? Just to kill Lich a couple times? I guess probably a lane kill, just because Reedy's a better player. I'm guessing. No, not even. Because Night Stalker doesn't die till 20 minutes. Random Night Stalker kill and a Lich kill. Um, yeah. Uh, Reedy's not set up for success here. Well, I wonder, could you just pick the Jug here? Like, I don't know why you'd pick a Jug into Legion, but if you end up with a Jug anyway. Or just pick the carry, whatever the carry is going to be here. Pick like a troll, honestly. Or if you want to pick Jug, pick Jug. I don't get the point of holding the carry pick so late. Like, yeah, surely you can just get a better hero for Reedy. Because this puck pick turned out very poorly, I think. It was kind of iffy into the heroes they're already showing. And by the end of it, it just looks like garbage. I don't know. Like, either pick the hero first, or don't. Is that weird? Pick into a good game, at least, right? I don't know. I don't have issues with this hero being picked first. But that assumes that your later picks are good. I don't really think that happened here. I don't know. Mixed opinions, mixed opinions, but either way, Cryptic won. Not being very conclusive today. I apologize. Alright, so we see Techies ban game two. I mean, no one wants to play against Techies two times in a row, so they do pick up the Earth Spirit for the dude. We see a Witch Doctor pick up. I think this is a bit more of a comfort pick. Um, I don't know if there's any specific reason they didn't do a game one, but they bring it back. I think, it, yeah, most played hero. Yeah, I remember this in previous weeks. The Witch Doctor pick seems a lot better. I'm a pretty big fan of comfort when possible, when it's not a grief, you know, and Witch Doctor is definitely a pretty good hero for that. Uh, we see a Jakiro pick, pretty generic, but the long range stun for Witch Doctor is kind of nice. See a very early Ember pickup, which seems pretty cool if you believe in Reedy to carry. I don't understand why you wouldn't just pick a pause one here, though. Uh, why are we like why are we last picking pause ones? I don't get this. What's the point? This is like a terrible Ricky game. But by the time we get here, there's just like three hundred pause one bands. It's not even that bad, I guess. But they picked three pause ones. They really did it to him with the picking three pause one strat to uh, lower the pause one pool. So they ban four, and then they pick three. And then Maniac bans one. So you're down eight carries. Mind you, one of them's an AM, which is irrelevant. But uh, I, I don't really get this. It seems silly. Like, why don't you last pick the mid? 
because we see this Monkey King pick to counter the Ember, which now just makes Ember's lane super ass, even if he is a better player than Cryptic is. Like Cryptic's got his item, Cryptic has way better item timings. Like 13 minutes, we see Brown Boots, Bottle, Wraith Band, Maelstrom. On Cryptic, we're seeing Wraith Band, uh, Orb of Corrosion, Phase Boots, Maelstrom. Orb of Corrosion and Bottle are pretty similarly priced. It's literally just a full phase on top of the Maelstrom. And then he gets his second item around the same time. I don't know how it happened, like after the laning phase in this like early to mid game area. Uh, obviously, this was a bit cheaper, but this would imply that they had about the same amount of gold per minute, I think. Math there might not be perfect. Maybe this does imply Cryptic's. I'm trying to like head math it. Maybe Cryptic was getting a bit more gold. Either way. Either way. It's not a great lane. Um, it's not a lane that Reedy can pop off in. It almost seems like both these games, Reedy's like not. Like this is the player that wins them games. Right? And he's on a roll that tends to like their hero being picked pretty late. And instead he's getting picks like early picks. So he's picked this Ember that's gets countered by the Monkey King. Last game we saw the Puck that was already countered by the Legion. And proceeded to get countered uh, lightly by the Wraith King and then strongly by the Night Stalker. Uh, the Tide is like whatever. Uh, I guess. I don't know if this is a comfort hero or what. I would think you would normally hold the offlane pick and pick a support, but it's fine either way. I don't think that matters. I think that's fine. Um, they wouldn't end up seeing anything useful anyway because of that Monkey Kong pickup for mid. Uh, and then we see the offlane Alk and the Troll. It's a little weird. I think they probably just like um, weren't able to correctly predict the lanes with these bands. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. I, I think they just assumed that it was a Monkey King mid. The AM ban is super strange. I have no idea why you'd ban AM. That makes no sense. Especially if Ricky's in the pool. And you want to pick Ricky. But I don't know. Ricky's, like, terrible against Troll. I don't know if he's particularly good against Earth Spirit, either. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This draft is kind of scuffed. I mean, part of this is just Cryptic being the better team. Like, there's definitely something very greedy about having a Pause one esque mid and an offlane Alk. But it looks like they got both those Ags, like, by 20 minutes, pretty much. Like, uh, Loose Moose at 21 minutes with Battle Fury, SNY, Ags. That is pretty insane. I don't understand why he went back for a Morbid Mask, but that's whatever, I guess. Also, why is there a Basher in the backpack? I don't know what happened at the end of this game, but it's probably not worth asking. I don't know. I think Maniac would be better if he just held the Reedy pick for later. Or, like, is Reedy's hero pool too small for that? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. Whatever. Um, I promised that I would mm, switch these teams if Cryptic won and he has won. How are we gonna do this? Let's do this. Do it like that. That's moving over. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't know. I'd al I almost want to like see what happens in these games. Because maybe it isn't really a draft thing. Maybe Cryptic's game. Maybe Cryptic's team is just this good. I mean, this is the highest MMR team. This is the Moneyball draft. But, I don't know. This just seems a little whack. I don't, I don't, I just don't get why Reedy's heroes are being picked so early when the early weeks is like, it looked like it was just the Reedy show for wins. And then you don't give him pick priority. It's just, it's just a weird response in my opinion. But I'll, I'll stop talking about this too much. I'm sure I'm being very annoying right now, repeating myself over and over again. Luth versus uh, Barrel. Uh, this is the, one of the few ones I predicted correctly with a 2-0, as did a few other people. Um, oh, and it was Chris standing in for Luth. 
I think there were some predictions that said one. I think someone said one one on the basis that there was a stand in and they didn't know who the stand in was or something. Um, but Chris is a god, and I knew Chris. I knew it was Chris standing in, so I was prepared. Oh, there's actually two stand ins this game. So this is this is not their normal mid. This is not Battle God. This is uh, Adam. Double stand in. I think I did know this, but I'd forgotten. Uh, shall we look at the draft? We have a first pick Puck, which ended up as a support, which is interesting. Um, we see a Witch Doctor pick, a Jakiro pick, a little deja vu with that. And then a Techies. Disgusting. Had to do it to him, I guess. Scrub, the other Techies player in the league. I think it's Nomad, Yolk, and Scrub, but Nomad's playing core. So he's probably not going to be busting out the Techies anytime soon. Uh, for the techies players, you gotta watch out for. Uh, we see Slark ban. Little weird. It is good against the puck. I don't think the hero is that good overall, though, especially when you're picking a 17, because there are a couple very difficult counters, most notably Bloodseeker, that are uh, problematic if you pick it. I don't know. I think you have to have, like, a Slark player for that to work. I think the hero is not objectively that great, like, you know, in a, in a vacuum. Uh, Jug Man, I mean, these heroes, Jug, Monkey King, very good in a vacuum. Uh, Void Spirit and Ricky are definitely pretty annoying. Void Spirit, one of the better mids. Ricky's just a bitch. No one likes Ricky. Uh, Mars Ban. Got a little hero uh, player specific, not really. Still a, a pretty good hero. Uh... Can't really argue about banning that. We see the Wraith King pickup. Um, obviously, pretty nice carry, especially in leagues like this. We see that responded by with an Underlord. Uh, I don't. I don't. I honestly, I don't really like Underlord that much. Um, I think the hero is just like the hero just doesn't do anything. It's just a big blob of like health and damage, and then pit. Uh, it's not like other offlaners that have the ability to get on top of people. It just kind of walks at you. But I guess it makes some sense, maybe, against this team. Because these this hero also just walks at you. The lane's probably fine. I don't know if it's that good. I was going to say maybe it can tank Techies Mines too, but I don't know if any hero can really tank Techies Mines. It, it just increases the amount you need to kill them. They all die eventually. Uh, then we see an Ember Spirit pick up a little brave, but you have Atoms, so it's probably fine. And they don't even bother countering it. They just pick this IO, this carry IO, which I think is like a thing this guy does. Yeah, he's been doing it very recently, in fact. Very cringe. Cringe pick. It's a pretty good game, though. 8 minute HOD, 15 minute AGS. Yeah, the carry IO is a stupid hero. Um, but they do it. Whatever. Uh, Ogre, Tango, Bounty. Ogre or Bounty? They're assuming that it's a Puck mid and an IO1. They know it's an IO1. Because this guy's known to do IO1s. This is Wee Licking, right? And they think it's a Puck mid, which is fairly reasonable. A reasonable assumption. So they ban an Ogre, which is a little strange. And then they ban a Bounty, which I guess kind of makes sense. You definitely wouldn't want to be against like this uh, snowball-y IO draft if they had a bunch of track gold. So I can't complain too much about that, I suppose. It's very annoying against Wraith King, too. I think Wraith King... Like, ba laning as bounty usually feels shitty, but as Wraith against a Wraith King, it feels quite nice, because Wraith King really doesn't do shit to you. And I'm pretty sure Battle's been practicing the Bounty Hunter as well. Um, but instead we see a Bristleback mid, uh, and then a Legion, which is obviously incredible against the Bristleback. Kills the supports fairly easily. Not as great against the Underlord or the IO, but who cares? Um, I don't know. I don't like the Barrel Draft. I see what he was trying to do here. I don't think you needed both Underlord and Bristle. This seems extremely overkill. Like, I get that you want someone for IO to tether to in the later stages of the game. Once you're done with your Hull of the Dominator farming. 
but you don't need two of them. You could have just a single hero that does something useful, and I think that would be a, a big boon to your gameplay, you know? Like maybe a Void Spirit, maybe just run the puck core, even. Are you against an Ember? Yeah, it's a pretty good puck game, I think. I think. Um, and the Techies is annoying, and the Wraith King doesn't really die, but you're very good against the Ember. And of course you can kill the Witch Doctor. I don't know. Or, you know, just some other hero if you don't like the puck. I, I don't I don't think the Bristle Underlord combo is anything but just hot garbage. You can't catch anyone. You can't lock down anyone without IO or not IO, without a puck ulti. You just have absolutely no chain stun or hard CC. It's like what you pit into Jakiro stun. That's like it. It's fairly useless. Uh, meanwhile, on this team, we have Legion running around, Ember running around. Eventually, Wraith King. Wraith King doesn't even get a blink this game. Just builds to man up on people. Uh, the Techie's doing Techie's things as well. Yeah, I, I see what Barrel's trying to do, but I don't know. Poor execution. You need at least one hero that does something, then. Uh, game 2. Unlike Maniac, Barrel decided not to ban the Techie's game 2. <laughs> Bans the Legion instead. Uh, which is strange, given that it was a last pick legion uh, into a pretty good legion game. Um, I don't think there was any threat of that hero being first picked, but there was definitely a threat of techies being first picked. And you decided to subject yourself to a second techies game, which is odd. I hate techies, so I despise playing against it. I don't mind it so much when it's on my team, but when I'm playing against it, I'm very upset. Uh, so we see a shaman pick, fairly standard. We see a wraith king pick. Choosing to take it much earlier this game. Um, then we see a Mars, which is fine. They saw the Mars got banned second phase last game, so they choose to take it earlier. If they like the hero, more power to them. Uh, then we see the Techies pick, once again, very gross. Uh, we see a bunch of carry bans here. We see the Alk and the Monkey, both of which I think are quite good against Wraith King. And we see the Juggernaut, which is just annoying in general. Um, on the other side, we're seeing mostly mid bands with the return of Battle God. We're seeing the Void Spirit, Leshrac, and DP. All heroes he plays pretty well. Uh, then we see a Jakiro pickup. Nice combo with the Wraith King in lane. Snapfire for Barrel, one of his classics. A Tidehunter for Mr. Fishe. Just a fairly standard fighting long cooldown off laner. And a PA for We Lick him. We Lick him out. I have faith in you, Plat. Whatever your name is. Uh, the PA is a little interesting. Um, I don't think it's a great hero this patch, but all the great heroes other than Troll are banned. I think personally I would have just taken the Troll. But if you are more of a PA player, I guess it's okay. I would be a little afraid of the Techies. Uh, I I said before, any hero can die to techies, as long as there's enough mines, but PA dies, like, early game, I think, too easy. Like, you accidentally walk into a, a red mine trap, and you're just deado. Hero has no HP. Very bad against nukes in general. I guess that's my real point here. I think PA struggles against nukes. And uh, even if you don't walk into, like, a preset trap, if your BKB ends and techies throws a green mine at you in the middle of the fight, it really hurts. It's not a terrible pick. I can't complain too much. The lane maybe isn't that great, but it's a tide. Hero's annoying, I guess. Just deal with it. I think AM may have been the pick here, actually. Like, I'm, I'm still sitting here thinking about it. Is AM the pick? Their lockdown's kind of weak. You're okay against the Wraith King. You force him to buy the shard pretty early, and uh, I think you just outfarm him is usually the idea there. You have some extra magic resist against the Techies and the Chikiro. And I think you lane okay in the Tide. Probably not great, but at least you can burn his mana. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't love the PA pick. Don't hate it. I'll, I'll move on now. Storm ban, Puck ban, Meepo ban, Clink ban. I wasn't aware that Battle God played Meepo. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. We see a Zeus pickup. Uh, just a lot of magic damage here. Um... I think that's fine, uh, especially into an unknown mid. 
I think that's probably fine. I definitely prefer the mobile heroes, but Puck is banned and Void Spirit's banned, and those are the go-tos for that. Ember's a little risky. And uh, what else season is there? Quop's kind of shit. I doubt he plays SF. So at least not in his top five. And Zeus is, so Zeus is fine. I can't complain too much. And then we see a Disruptor bid, the Bright Side Classic. Uh, it's a very obnoxious hero to play against. Um, the early Ags is devastating. The early damage of Q is very rough. The, the hero definitely has scaling problems. The hero has problems with getting blown up with no escapes and a pretty squishy stats. That's not a sentence. I think pretty low HP, pretty low armor, no escape mechanisms. Um, the hero does take the risk of just getting jumped and killed, but if you can't jump and kill it, it does just do a ton of damage. Uh, it's not like a traditional mid by any sense of the imagination, but it is something I've seen a lot from a lot of different people. Uh, as, as, as any support goes, I think it's probably one of the better mids, personally, but you can take or leave that, I guess. It's a little weird into these heroes in particular. I'm not sure why it won lane against Zeus, assuming that Dota buff is being accurate with these lane statements. Uh, I would think Zeus would do just fine against it. The item timings kind of match the announcement of lane outcome though. 23 minute ags with brown boots versus a 15 minute ags with brown boots. Seems like Battle God probably did win that lane. Um, I don't think you're meant to be very good into PA. You have to get the jump with the Ags, or otherwise you just get blown sky high. Um, kind of a similar thing with Mars. I think Mars can probably jump you quite easily and burst you down, especially with Zeus assistance. Or snap assistance. The snap uh, Mars combo I had almost forgotten about is obviously very strong. Um, so I don't really like the Disruptor pick, to be honest. I think this is pretty bad on paper, but they made it work, so I guess I can't complain too much. Honestly, I, I think Barrel's Draft is probably fine this time. Um, it just looks like PA maybe had a too hard of a game. I think you probably just gave them too many comfort heroes here. And what I really mean by that is that you gave Scrub Techies. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't give Scrub Techies. This game goes pretty long, 50 minutes. I assume it had to be somewhat close. Not really. Just took a while to end against Zeus, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Don't give Scrub Techies. It's not worth it. Um, Deal with this Disruptor better. You have a lot of ways to jump him. I think the draft is probably okay, though. Mars just had a terrible game, huh? 20 minute Yules, 31 minute Hood, 34 Blink. It looks like this is probably more of a play problem than anything. So it's harder to fix, but I mean, that's what this league's all about, right? Improving, getting coached, learning, loving, laughing, picking techies because you're an ass. Just all the things we love about Dota 2. Okay, on to my own game. How am I doing on time? Pretty terribly, but that's normal at this point. Let's uh, recount the memories of my 1-1. Uh, let's see, the draft, we picked a clock, and we were on like a clock mood this week, I don't, I think it was just an experimental thing, I don't know, I forgot who suggested the clock, someone said clock, we did some clock, they pick an oracle, which I think is pretty bad into the clock, so that one I think worked out, uh, we pick a death prophet, because the hero is cool, uh, there's also wraithing and jug bands, two of the most popular guys to pick early. Not to mention the Shaman. Um, then just a ton of carry bans after the Mars pick. They ban a couple... Well, Ursa at least I think is pretty good into Mars. They also ban the Night Stalker because uh, I hate Night Stalker, I guess. Same. Uh, we ban the... Weep Slayer was actually here for game one. I guess that's a pretty big piece of news. They said he wasn't going to be, as he wasn't in the previous weeks. But he, he was able to show up, which is pretty nice. Big fan of that. Um, so anyway, we ban a Monkey King, a Void, and the Weep Slayer Clinks. I, I don't remember the full story behind them all, but there they are. Uh, they pick a Dark Willow. That's my hero. Uh, so I pick a Lion, because I the hero seems cool, you know. Yolk told me Lion's cool. I tried it out. 
I think I agree. They picked a less Shrek. I'm not really sure why. This may have been uh, a lane thing against DP. DP is a bit of a bully against a lot of mid laners, I think. Um, so that may be the reason they picked it. Maybe it's just a comfort pick. I'm not really sure. It's not a hero I'm seeing a ton of. And it's not a hero that I think was particularly good against any of our heroes so far. Um, but I, I might just be... There might be some mid matchup thing I don't know about. I'm really bad with mid matchups. Uh, we then picked a life stealer because it looked like a pretty good life stealer game, and that's that's pretty much the only reason there. Uh, they banned the SF and the Zeus, banning a lot of the burst heroes, uh, the magic burst heroes. Pretty reasonable, I think. We definitely would have done well. <coughs> oh, pardon me. My voice just like died. Ugh, my throat feels real dry. We will persevere. Um, I think we definitely could have uh, benefited from some magic nukes like SF and Zeus. We end up going for a Quop. Bit of a comfort pick for Snowstorm. I said earlier in one of the other, uh, I guess, game reviews that I don't think Quop's a very good hero. And I don't, I stand by that. I don't think it's a very good hero, but uh, Snowstorm makes it look perfectly pickable, so we went with that. And then they picked an Alchemist, a hero I kind of forgot about, honestly. It May have been a better ban than PL or PA, not sure. We definitely have a pretty dog shit lineup against PA and PL, so uh, I don't think I regret those bans, but the Alchemist is a very meta hero that I at least personally kind of forgot about. I'm not the one that drafts, maybe Lava remembered it, but um, that was kind of like, oh yeah, shit, that hero's in the pool. But I think our lineup's pretty good against it. We have the Life Stealer already. We have the uh, DP, which I think lanes pretty well, and can always rush Vessel, as we did. It says Alk won the lane. I'm pretty sure that's just because Alk makes hella gold. I think that lane was pretty good for Lava. Alk did get pretty nice farm, but he also died twice. Eh, I can see it either way. Still has a lot of gold, so I suppose it's not a loss, but I mean, he's barely had a life stealer. Same last hits as Life Stealer. Oh, something happened between eight and twelve minutes here on Slizzy, and I, I don't remember what. Learned to farm or something. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, Lava had a pretty nice game here. Kind of went off. Uh, Snowstorm had an okay game. There was a couple times where I think he just kind of got blown up because he's a Quap and you have no health pool. Um. But otherwise, it was pretty clean. We tracked down Mr. Phantom. We delayed a lot of his timings. Slizzy Hero got online. I think Lava, I remember, played the fights pretty well. A lot of kiting and shit. Uh, then game two was really just the Phantom show here. Uh, Phantom with the seventh pick Jug. First pick Mag. Pretty disgusting. We'd actually banned Jug game one. We decided to take out the Oracle game two. Um... We picked a clock. That was probably a mistake. If we were when they picked the mag, it seemed like it was very high chance of being a jug pick. Clock, obviously, uh, notoriously bad into jug. The only thing you really offer is the uh, spin TP cancel with hook, but in lane, at least, and probably for the rest of the game, you are pretty pretty shitty against him. Um, especially with how like uh, mobile jug is now with the ags and the shard, just always. A problem. So that was probably a mistake, but anyway, they picked the Jug and then we picked the Axe to try and counter. Uh, they ban a bunch of carries that are good into Juggernaut. Very understandable. We ban out that Weep Slayer Clinks again and a couple uh, obnoxious mid heroes. Um, we um, Once they've picked Phantom's hero, Weep Slayer just becomes a massive target. We then lock in Dark Willow because they didn't pick it and I wanted to play it. It's a cool hero. Katz takes up the Shaker with the Notorious Blink before level 6. A little bit of XP problems, but that's alright. We then take a Troll Warlord. Um, I think I probably suggested it. I just like Troll, honestly. I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea or I had any good reasons, but I think Troll's cool, so I think I suggested a Troll. They then pick a Viper, something Sir Fireball really likes to pick. I don't think it was a very good game for it. Um, it's kind of nice against the Axe because you can throw down the Break, which stops him from spinning. It kind of requires Axe to get a BKB to be fully 
useful if there's a viper nearby but it is very bad in laning as the troll warlord and that played out very heavily um i believe slizzy ended the lane like seven and three or something they were they were able to kill him a couple times seven and two actually seven two and one um almost six thousand gold about the same amount of gold as the alcat in the first game um yeah viper's just like this hero's a lane bully but troll just doesn't give a shit uh, troll is ranged as well. He can trade with you. You can't kite him. If he gets on top of you, he blinds you, and then it's just extra bad. Uh, I think that was a big mistake. Um, not that it mattered. Uh, we banned DP Razor in case the Viper went mid. Um, I think we almost expected the Viper to go mid. Because... I don't know if we expected it, because we knew Sir Fireball really liked playing Viper. But at the same time, we didn't think it was a very good offlane Viper game. So we're like, we should probably pick heroes that could bully Troll. I think was our thinking. I mean, Razor and DP can go mid as well, so maybe these were mid bans. I don't remember. Razor is probably just a good ban regardless. So that hero kind of dunks on Troll. DP, I don't remember the reasoning behind. Good hero, I guess. Um, they ban Puck and Quop. Pretty sensible if they were planning on picking this Ember. Uh, that essentially also takes out three of Snowstorm's heroes. Puck, Quop, and Ember were probably all on the table, honestly. Uh, so then we pick him as SF. He does this right-click SF thing. I don't I don't think this is good, but... I've definitely seen him look very good on it in other games. Not this game, though. This game was a little rough. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, Phantom went 28-0. Uh, the game was fairly even for a very long time. Uh, honestly, I felt like we were in a pretty pretty good spot. Um, it's like as long if we were able to get a kill onto Jug, it's like yeah, that's all we need, right? Like the other heroes, they're all kind of having rough games. We're doing pretty well. If we can just kill the Jug, you know, easy win. But that never happened. <laughs> Phantom was unstoppable. He played very well. We had a few pretty notable misplays as well. Um, but, you know, overall pretty good game. Phantom had a good time. Twenty eight zero. Not all I can say about that other than, wow. Ooh woo. Phantom God. I don't know. Whatever you're feeling. Nick vs. Brent didn't tick it, so I'm not going to look at their game at all. Well, they did tick it, sorry. Ha, <laughs> I spoke too soon. They ticketed, but they did it on two different uh, fucking team names, which just annoys me, so I'm not going to bother. Alright. Fazoli's. Mr. Harbinger vs. Mr. Princess. Game 1. I don't think I looked at this series at all. I kind of looked at the others. Let's see what we got going here. We <laughs> see right off the bat two carry bands. Uh, with a Phantom Lancer and an AM. On the other side we see a Wind Ranger and a Witch Doctor ban. Uh, Witch Doctor, I believe, this is, is this another Witch Doctor comfort pick? It looks like no. I'm uh, not entirely sure what the Witch Doctor ban's about, or the Wind Ranger for that matter, but they ban out both. I assume there's some research there. I trust Hard's judgment. Uh, we see a Jakiro followed by a Shaman. Then we see a Wraith King followed by a Jug. I'm almost surprised uh, Harb didn't go for something that's a little stronger versus Wraith King. Uh, Monkey King is, of course, a hero that jumps to mind. Alchemist. Maybe he felt Alchemist was too risky. Um, but that's another hero that's quite solid he could have picked up. Jug is obviously very good, but... I'm a little surprised he chose to take it here. Given that he saw his pause one opponent's hero. And I think is like... I don't think Jug's bad versus Wraith King. But I think the other two heroes I mentioned are just notably better. Um, but that might just be a comfort thing. And it might just be that he disagrees with me on the strength as well. So, not 100% sure there, but Jug can't complain too much. Viper, Underlord, Storm Bands. Viper, Underlord, I assume, are probably to secure Jug's lane, with Storm being more of a princess aimed ban. Uh, if they were planning on picking Tidehunter, I imagine they realized that they were lacking in Storm focused lockdown. Tide and Jack obviously have some pretty large lockdown abilities, but they're kind of hard to land on Storm. So if uh, Princess is a Storm player, that's an understandable ban. On the other side, we had Zeus Timber Puck. 
Sure. Uh, I don't know what to say. It looks like a somewhat random group of heroes, but I'm sure they knew what they were doing. Uh, then we have that Tide pick I mentioned, a Lich pick, pretty boring. Lion pick, more lockdown, cool hero. I've become a big fan very recently. Uh, we have an Abaddon pick. This is an uh, offlane Abaddon. I believe this is a bit of a Thrill House special, because he likes playing this hero as a support. And so it's just kind of a natural pick up for him in his transition to offlane. Uh, it's also quite good against Jug, I'd imagine. Uh, doesn't die to Omni Slash as long as his spells are up, or importantly, his ult is up. Um, kind of a similar thing against Lion, maybe. Has some pretty nice saves. Yeah, I can't complain too much. Uh, they are a little lacking in lockdown, because uh, Abaddon obviously offers absolutely zero. And neither Liches doesn't really, but I, they have like lots of little little lockdowns. They have Shaman who actually has quite a lot of lockdown, and then they have Lich and Wraith King who have little lockdowns. And they eventually pick up a Void Spirit who also has a, a bit of lockdown. So, uh, but before we get to that, we see a monkey and a Quant ban. Uh, that's probably Princess focused. I know he plays at least the monkey. On the other side, we see a Razor and a DK ban. Uh, probably just didn't want to play against. Those type, you know, those type of heroes, those just uh, lane, not necessarily even lane bully. I don't know if DK is a lane bully per se, but very like just resilient laners. They know Supra's on mid now. There's a pretty big skill gap between Princess and Supra. He doesn't want that to be diminished by hero picks. Bans DK and Razor seems good to me. Razor probably also would have been just a good pick for the game here. You can leash onto Wraith King and just take all his damage. They then pick a Void Spirit. You know, the, the favorite mid of the patch and uh, Harb but attempts to respond to the Legion. A bit of a strange pick. Looks like he had an okay game though. 9 and 5. The Blink Dagger timing isn't too bad, although the later timings aren't looking great. May have had some trouble snowballing. 7 minutes for a Blade Mail? What is that? That's like 300 gold a minute? I don't think that's super great. Whatever, you have 270 dual damage by the end of this. This is a pretty long game, I think. 50 minutes. Uh, Rhino, this was their stand-in for offlane, standing in for Mapo. I think this account turned out to be kind of sus. Um, it looks like they had a very nice game. 29-minute overwhelming blink. The items are super strange, but they have a lot of them. They actually have the highest GP on the team at 700, and the highest last hits on the team. I don't know how much of that is just because the game went long, or how much of it is because they played very greedy. Uh, but either way, looking at the drafts, I don't really like the Legion pick. It's super shitty into both Abaddon and Wraith King. You can pick off supports, and you can probably get Void Spirit too, but otherwise it seems meh. I think the Jug pick maybe could have been something else, but whatever. Hard looks like he struggled a bit this game. Um... I don't know. I wonder if it's... Did this Tide just take farm? I'm a little curious. Maybe not. 20... Why does he even have an overwhelming blink? Yeah, I don't know. Something went a little wrong here, because it looks pretty even. Someone had to have gold. I don't like the timing comparisons here. It looks like Wraithkin is just richer. I guess it depends when he got the Ag Shard, though. Because Wraith King has, I mean, Armlet, Radiance, Blink before Harb even has SNY. I doubt he went Shard before the SNY. Probably after SNY, right? I could look. How much do I actually care? Not a lot. I'm looking anyway. I've already clicked. What does the Shard pick up? Okay, it is Yasha Shard. So that's not as bad. Eh, whatever. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, two of these heroes just do not really die to the Omni Slash or the Duel. Jug obviously offers a lot more than just Omni Slash nowadays with the Axe and the Shard. But and there's just it feels like there's a lot of upfront damage. Like you jump him with what Duel and or Ravage, and if you get that on either Wraith King or Abaddon, they don't really care. But at the same time, I feel like I'd be perfectly happy to play the Harbinger uh, draft. I think it looks okay. This is probably maybe a bit of a play thing. The Legion pick is very strange. I think I changed the Legion pick, but I think the rest is fine. Uh, for my personal useless opinion. Uh, the Abaddon definitely stands out as a very strange pick, and I'm, I'm not sure how much I like it. Uh, it's kind of nice against the Ravage and the Jug, but... 
Uh, that's definitely a player specific thing. I'm not sure if it's great in a vacuum. But yeah, I don't know. It's fine, I guess. Uh, looks like Princess had a very good game on the Void Spirit. It's almost a little weird that they banned Quaff instead of Void Spirit. Uh, I imagine looking back, they would probably rather ban the Void, especially if they like pick a Legion. Um, Void Spirit is just very good right now. Very reliable mid. Uh, and Quaff is just kind of shitty. So I, I don't really get that ban. But I mean, you can't ban everything, I guess. There's still other heroes in the pool they maybe could have picked. Ember being one, maybe Ember's in the same vein as Quaff, but either way, Princess had a good game, JD had a very good game, this Tide had a very good game, but could not carry, even with all these carry items, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, moving on, moving on, let's not spend all night here. Uh, wow, Game 2 is just a total stomp, holy shit. Wait, was I wrong? Oh, I was talking as if Princess had won. But actually, <laughs> Harb had won. And it was the Tide that I think carried them. Oh my god. How embarrassing. I totally said the wrong thing the entire time. Uh, it looks like a losing score, I'm gonna be honest. If you, like, ignore this guy. Like, kinda mediocre... Mediocre... Bad... Mediocre scorelines. And then you see this one, which is actually quite it's quite impressive. I don't know, I guess Tide carried them? What happened here? It's uh, fairly back and forth. They had a... This isn't even that large of a lead, actually, right? Oh, no. There's all these heroes in the way. I can't see the thing. So I guess it's like 1,300. I don't know, fam. They took a lot of building damage. This looks like it was a pretty close game. It really does look like Harp struggled here. I think Harp had a hard game. But I guess this Tide carried him. Then game two, they got stomped. Uh, game two, Mapo's back on the Veno. A quick look at the draft. It's a being a mid Underlord, huh? The mid picks are super weird. They just don't have a mid player. Uh, we see the Jug and the Raking Band this time. Same bands from Harb. Uh, Jakiro, Rubik, great counter. Underlord, terrible against Rubik, kind of weird. Ur uh, Ursa, very good against Underlord. Maybe that's why they put it mid. Three more carry bans, because fuck Harb. Interesting that they're actually banning Thrillhouse heroes. I, I guess they knew this was a mid-underlord? That's kind of interesting. Hmm. That's very odd. They seem to have known. These, these bans indicate... No, wait, I'm looking at the wrong team. Why are they banning Abaddon? No one in their right mind picks Abaddon. Wait, no, this team has Thrill House. Oh, 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 it's late. My brain is melting. I'm really doing this series a disservice because I'm getting everything wrong because I'm stupid. All right, my bad. They picked the Underlord, and then they banned Thrill House heroes, which makes sense. And they ban a Lich because I guess that hero is somewhat annoying. Then we see an Ogre pick, which is very generic, but understandable. J fits special, I'm sure, I think. I have no idea. Uh, wow, the zero, the zero kill supports. Very nice. Big support. Oh, we see a line pickup. Once again, great hero. We see a Sand King and then a Bloodseeker, which is kind of weird. I've heard this hero is kind of coming back, but I still think it's just strange. Um, surely this doesn't lane well against the Sand King. Right? I... It looks fine-ish? No, that's not really fine, is it? That is 300 GPM. I don't know how fast this spirals out of control. Dodo says they won every lane. That is a pretty good way to win games. So I would advise it. Uh, but moving on, we see a Storm and a Quap ban. Once again, I think these are super princess focused. Uh, then we see a Ricky and a Viper ban. Uh, the Ricky ban is a little weird. Maybe you thinking it was going to be like a mid Ricky? No. Uh, whatever, but Viper's annoying and it can go in mid or off lane. I'm sure they expected this to be off lane, though. Uh, but it wasn't. It was a Veno. Surprise. And then they pick a Lina. I don't know what they expected the lanes to be. I imagine Lina does quite well against Veno mid. But they ended up against an Underlord mid, which they also won. That seems a little weird if they did indeed win. The item timings make me think. A 9-minute Yules versus 17-minute Yules. 
that princess did win that lane. That's got to just be a skill thing, because I'm sure in theory Underlord and Lina just both push out the wave and farm jungle camps. I don't think there should really be a winner there. It should just be a drawn lane. JD winning the lane against the uh, Lion Veno is also pretty bizarre. I don't think that should happen. Uh, Ursa definitely can beat Venos in lane. If you have the ability to get on top of the Veno, Veno has no way out and does just die. But usually the Gale makes that kind of hard, unless you can dodge the Gale. If Veno misses Gale, or you have a way to purge the Gale, which they don't, then he is definitely super killable. The hero's slow as shit, has no mobility spells. Ursa, the exact opposite. Fast, has a little jumpy thing, beats the shit out of ya. So this isn't like entirely unheard of, but it's a little surprising given the other heroes. You would think that Lion would help make space between Venno and Ursa. If Ursa did get on top of Venno, you just throw down the stun and Ursa could walk away, or Venno could walk away and re-distance himself and then throw down a Gale. And I don't think Rubik offers a lot there. Like you maybe get a lift, a toss, toss towards Ursa. But it's uh, kind of hard. I don't think you take this level 2 anymore. I could be wrong. I don't think... Le level 1 lift is kind of hard to use, I think. I don't know if you... Can you even, like, easily throw with that? Throw people to the side? I thought it was kind of hard with level 1. Probably still possible. I don't know. This is... This probably shouldn't have happened. Is what I'm really trying to say. I think this is... I think with the support... The support matchup... This should probably not have been a one lane for Ursa, but he won anyway. And then finally we had uh, the Sand King versus Bloodseeker lane, which I understand. That one makes sense to me. I don't think you would win that as a Bloodseeker. Uh, I... Not a lot of melee heroes do well into Sand King, but I, I mean, Bloodseeker doesn't really have anything. Like, what can you do? Like, you put a W on the Sandstorm and hope that Sand King gets angry? I, it just doesn't uh, I don't know, really get the point. I don't know. It makes sense to me that Bloodseeker loses that lane. I could be wrong. Maybe it is some like, counter here. Because I don't think it's that good against Ursa. Like, obviously, Ursa kind of has to stand still when he gets uh, Bloodseeker ulted, which he really hates. But it's, it's a weird pick. I don't know. A lot of carries were banned here, for sure. Um, but I don't entirely get the Bloodseeker pick. I... That sounds just like a lost lane and a mediocre Ursa counter, but it probably never ended up mattering. There may have been some grander plan in Harb's head. Probably is better understanding these things than I do. And it may have just never played out because of the hor just horrible laning situation where they lost all their lanes very hard. Um, maybe not very hard. It's 3k at 10 minutes, which is not the end of the world. It's just bad. But it does just continually spiral, continue to spiral out of control. It's a lot of lion deaths. Also, very early, very early Venno death, which is a little weird. Um, but anyway, that's everything, I guess. Uh, this is the other one I got correctly predicted. Uh, the best, uh, the best predictors were Scrub, Barrel, and quote unquote Adam, which was actually just randomized because uh, Adam didn't write a blog. So shout out to them for getting half of them correct. Let's make our own predictions. Oh no, wait, tier list. Am I changing anything? I'm so out of it. I need to start doing these earlier in the evening. Holy shit. Um, I don't think there's anything else to change here, really. Uh, Cat's team did do pretty well with the 28-0 Phantom game. I think they probably need another week. These two, I'm not moving yet. I could move either of these two down. I think Princess had a very nice performance this week. They only really seemed to lose that Tide, who ended up being a little sketch. Nick's, this isn't Nick, this is Brent. Brent's team did okay this week. I think they just, like, kind of fucked up a draft. Yeah, I'm not moving anything. Very boring, very boring. I have very strong belief in my tier list. Uh, so let's just do some predictions, shall we? Cryptic versus Yumi. Oh, this is actually kind of hard. I think Cryptic's team has the potential to apply a lot of pressure. And I think that's where Yumi's team is going to buckle. I also think Cryptic takes drafting a lot more seriously. Uh, Yop really seemed to throw a draft, I think, last week. And I think Cryptic is far less likely to do that. 
So I'm going to go with a 2-0 for Cryptic. Wait, if I'm giving Cryptic a 2-0, maybe I should change my tier list. Maybe I should, like, move this guy up. Honestly? Okay, here, here's what we're doing. Eh. I think this might be more accurate. Ah, uh, they've really shot up. Uh, uh, Yumi's team looked worse than Yop's team in that series, just from the Dota buff, and I think he's going to lose versus Cryptic. Like, Yumi really, I don't know, they lost game one, and then they won off this Meepo pick that Yop decided just to not counter in any way, shape, or form with a sniper pick. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think this is fair. Going back, going back to what we're doing. 2-0, Yop versus Luth. Now, this one's kind of interesting. I think these teams are actually super similar. Uh, Yop's team, probably a bit better in the carry department, or the core department, I mean. But I think a bit worse in the support department. Um, the supports are obviously quite solid, Big E and Blackout, but I don't think they are as good as Scrub and Woe. Um, not as a unit, and I probably not individually either. Maybe, maybe individually, but I don't know. As a unit, definitely not. I think Scrub's just better than both those players by a decent margin. Um, the mid lane's going to be a little weird. It kind of depends how well Battle God performs. He can be a bit of a hit or miss player. Um, it also depends where they put the players. Uh, Eno and Yop have been swapping around a bit, mostly just for Juggernaut picks, but they could do it more in the future. It's hard to say. Uh, they have that ability if they need to use it. Uh, Bible Man's obviously a pretty big deal. Puts a lot of pressure on Luth's lane. Uh, and Luth wasn't even here last week. So I don't know how practiced he's going to be. He's a bit rusty. That could uh, that could just ruin the game. If Bible Man goes off... I think if Bible Man goes off, like, Yop just kind of wins, probably? I think I'll be safe and give it a 1-1. Um, there's a lot of heroes to ban for both teams. Uh, you got the Techies, you got the Juggernaut, you got the various weird Battle God heroes that he runs mid, all of which could be very scary, especially for a mid like Eno, who uh, isn't super experienced in the lane. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of ways that game could go. I imagine that the mid lane and the Bible Man lane are probably the lanes to look at. So I think if Battle God or Bible Man go off, like if only one of them goes off, that probably means that team might just win. But if uh, both of them go off, then it's maybe back to even. I don't know. Uh, my team versus Brent. Uh, I think Wasps can just single-handedly carry games in this league very easily. But it seems like so far they are very good at drafting themselves into a bit of a hole where Wasps can't solo carry. Uh, last week they decided to play against the Nick Alchemist for some reason, and then had Wafs go safe lane on Jug, which didn't work out, and I think probably somewhat expectedly didn't work out, um, especially because Brent himself kind of got worked in the mid lane, despite having a favorable matchup. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I imagine they can probably pick Wafs a win hero one game, so I'll give it a 1-1. I'll uh, stop giving myself two O's. We'll see, though. If Wasps can't get in, like, a 1v9 position, I think, like, obviously Wasps is, a, like, if you do the Wasps to Slizzy comparison for the pause ones, there's a big gap there, but I feel like the remainder of the team, Slizzy's team, my team, our team, is just a lot stronger. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Evan's pretty good, too. I guess Evan's actually the pause one in theory. It's hard to tell. Wasps just plays pause ones for mid, dude. But I think Snowstorm might be able to deal with it. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. I think a 1-1's fair. Uh, Maniac versus Harb. This one's kind of interesting. Maniac's team's looking like in real shambles. They had, I, week one, I like really liked their drafts. And then after that, it just looked like they have like curable problems, I swear. And they're like uh, roll swapping too, pretty hard. Harb also roll swapped. And is kind of having weird mid picks because of it. But I mean, Harb on pause one is in theory a good thing. Harb didn't really go off last week, though. It was really just the Tide that won the game. Like, his only win seems to have come from a stand-in Tide, who turned out later to be an illegal... Like, not an illegal stand-in, but, like, a questionable stand-in. Which is, uh, I don't know. I think I'll probably give Maniac the 2-0 here, but a hesitant 2-0. Maniac's team need to kind of get their shit together. I had a lot of hope for them early on, 
and that got lost pretty fast. I think versus Harpsteen, they can probably still pull it off, though. Uh, Battle versus Cats, that's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, Cats' team did quite well against us last week. One sec. <laughs> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> A little sneeze there. I don't know if that got picked up. Hopefully not too loudly. I didn't uh, mute my mic in time. But anyway, Battle vs. Cats. Cats had a pretty good game against us last week, but that really was just kind of phantom against the world. Um, Weep Slayer has gone off in previous weeks, though. And the rest of them play, like, fine. I think the Viper pick gimped them. But the game before that, I think they did fine for the most part. Um, I'm kind of tempted to say 1-1. Uh, I think if Weep Slayer and Phantom both have a good game, Barrel's team probably gets a little rolled. But they probably won't have a good game. Both of them probably won't both have a good game both games. And I think in that case, Barrel's team probably has a bit of an edge. They do have a lot of MMR. Bodbass has been doing like okay in the mid lane. Had a couple really good performances, a couple mediocre performances. I don't think he's ever looked bad on the Dota buffs. So, I don't know. We're just going to give it a 1-1. One, one. Be a little boring here. Um, if I had to give it 2-0, oh, I don't even know who I'd give it to. So, yeah, I guess it's just a really hard stuck 1-1. One, one. Uh, Nick versus Princess. Uh, I think Princess O2 is this, honestly. I think there's, like, a couple things you have to watch out for for the Nick team. You have to watch out for Nick's Alk. You have to watch out for uh, the other guy, Zach. Zach's Lone Druid. And I think... And then, of course, there's a few heroes Jackman could probably carry on, the Pango and the Mars, most notably. But I think if you can just work around that, I mean, Princess and JD are probably more than enough to beat Nick's team. They just kind of have to make sure that they don't allow Nick or Zack on heroes that they can have a lot of impact on. And uh, Thrillhouse also did really well last week, which I think is huge. I think I mentioned I thought Thrillhouse would probably struggle early on because he was switching to a new role. But uh, somewhat expectedly, he has now seemed to adjust to that role pretty well. He had pretty good games, at least pretty good lanes it looked like on week three. So Princess has seen looking more and more rounded uh, every week. With Railhouse having better games and JD throwing less rapiers. So I think that's a pretty safe 2-0 prediction from me. And uh, that's that, yeah. One in the morning now, I made it barely over an hour so yeah uh enjoy this in at your work at your class whatever or better yet don't enjoy it it's a shit video i think i rambled for the entire damn thing i really came extra unprepared this week so <laughs> see you in week five pepe laugh